Hello, my name's uh, Professor Mike Lewis. I'm the Emeritus Professor of Oral Medicine here at Cardiff University. I've been working in oral medicine for more than 40 years. Today, I'm gonna to spend some time with TP and we're gonna be talking about the very common condition of oral lichen planus. Now, lichen planus, we don't actually really know the etiology. Do know that it's an immune-driven a reaction like a hypersensitivity where inflammatory cells are drawn to under the epithelium and cause changes, visible changes and symptoms. It can affect the skin if you go to a dermatology outpatient clinic, you'll find very many patients attending with skin like plainness. It can also affect the genital mucosa as well. But within my regard in an oral situation, Oral lichen planus, of course, affects the oral cavity. Now, it's common, as I said, about 1% of the population will suffer from lichen planus at some stage of their life. Within the mouth, the, the changes are quite characteristic. Firstly, it looks like lacy white lines affecting the lining of the mouth within the buccal mucosa. And as I always say, True lichen planus is bilateral and symmetrical in that it affects both sides of the mouth and in a sort of mirror image distribution. So you can get the buccal mucosa affected, the sides of the tongue, the gingivae, and in the, on the gingivae, it can appear as an erythema, like a desquamated gingivitis, an erythema of the gingivae that is not associated with poor plaque control. One good clinical tip is you do not get lichen planus in the hard palate. The thing about lichen planus is it's there a long time. It's not a matter of weeks, it's a matter of months and years in some patients. And during that period of time, the appearance can change and the symptoms can be present, it can go into remission and it can come back. So over a, pe a long period of time of many months, patients will suffer variable symptoms. And it's when it's symptomatic that we might need to have some form of treatment. But also anyone with an underlying diagnosis of oral lichen planus has to make sure it's not going to flare up and maintain a good oral hygiene at all times. As I mentioned, as an underlying basis for people with oral lichen planus, it's essential to maintain good oral hygiene. Mild symptoms, patients could benefit from maybe an antiseptic or anti-inflammatory mouthwash, such as those based on chlorhexidine or benzidamine hydrochloride. But as I said, it's an immune-driven process. And so there are inflammatory cells under the lining of the mouth causing the symptoms. So we need to put a forearm of anti-inflammatory agent on the mucosa. And there are three preparations in the dental formulary within the UK, which are based on steroids. And these could be steroids as a, as a spray or as little lozenges allowed to, to dissolve next to the affected oral mucosa. And in primary care, that the, the treatment of lichen planus should really initially make use of the topical steroids. And in very many patients, after a period of time, there will be a benefit. However, there is always a group of patients who will not respond to the care that's delivered in, in the primary dental care setting in the, in the practice by, the, by the, the dentist, the hygienist or therapist. And on those, for these patients, it's probably best to refer to a specialist secondary care. Now, if you have an oral medicine unit you can refer to, then that is the specialty you refer to. However, oral medicine isn't in all district general hospitals and the specialty there would be oral maxillofacial surgery, where the surgeons there will also have some experience in the management of oral lichen planus. There are a number of strategies and forms of treatment that can help patients manage the symptoms and improve education about oral lichen planus. Firstly, the, one of the main strategies, maintaining good oral health. However, people do become concerned 
that the white patches in their mouth may be an infection that they've caught and could pass on. So we have to reassure them this is not an infectious process. Worse still, they can sometimes worry that they get mouth cancer because we know that mouth cancer can present as white and red patches in the mouth. So that's another real important strategy is to reassure the patient they are not going to get mouth cancer. And also a number of patients when the gingivae are involved, we've got this desquamative gingivitis and this erythema of the gums around the teeth. They worry they're going to lose their teeth. But I have to reassure them every time, lichen planus does not involve loss of teeth due to bony support of the teeth. So it's a lot of reassurance up front there about the condition, the fact it's relatively common as one in a hundred patients may have it, and it's not infection, it's not a malignancy, and they're not going to lose their teeth. Once we've done that, it's focusing in, obviously, on maintaining that optimum oral health. And here, the, we need an effective toothbrush, a toothbrush that the patient can feel happy with, that's going to be effective for routine plaque removal. Interdental cleaning, very, very important, particularly with patients with gingival lichen planus. So there'll have to be some form of interdental cleaning. And then finally, toothpaste. And the toothpaste for patients with oral lichen planus, they much prefer ones that are sodium laurel sulfate free, so SLS free based toothpaste. So you would maintain good oral hygiene using the toothbrush, the interdental cleaning and the, the toothpaste. Other good tips for patients are the avoidance of spicy foods, tomatoes, carbonated drinks. Carbonated drinks contain a lot of benzoic acid, which occurs naturally in tomatoes, but patients can have a reaction to this. So some advice on, as I say, the avoidance of spicy foods, many of them will know that because they know they go out and they have their favorite Thai curry, it induces symptoms. So the avoidance of spicy foods, the tomatoes is one they don't realize because of the benzoic acid content. And then finally, benzoic acid is in a lot of carbonated drinks. So with all that, with some good oral hygiene and reassurance and the avoidance of some of the triggers, then the symptoms of oral lichen planus in very many patients can be maintained and to an optimal degree in primary care.